evening and welcome. I've brought something that's missing in tonight's show. All things that go up don't necessarily come back down. As you'll see, mountain climbing is a very hazardous sport. Strange things have happened in both the Andes and now in the Alps. Let's open our minds to the unknown. Let's look high into the mist around the mountain's peak. Let's escalate the level of fear as we bring to you tonight the crawling eye. To the observatory, I'll hitch a ride within the cable car. That is, unless you're gonna climb the whole way. Climb the whole way? What if I can help it? Ah, beautiful Trollenberg. Fresh air, beautiful mountains, and dead climbers. Why do so many experienced climbers die so mysteriously? And what of the mind-reading team of the Pilgrim sisters, Anne and Sarah? Seems that Anne is no fake, and that someone or something is filling her mind with thoughts of Trollenberg. The townspeople have tried to cover up all the little mishaps which are happening on top of their mountain. They send forth two experienced climbers, Brett and Dewhurst. Let's see what they find when the crawling eye continues. The Crawling Eye was filmed in 1958. Its main character, Alan Brooks, was played by Forrest Tucker. Forrest Tucker is most famous for his role in the 1960s comedy show, F Troop. F Troop, still one of the best shows of our time. Now let's watch Forrest Tucker star in The Crawling Eye. See, there are certain chemical changes that can take place inside rocks, which cause a physical alteration to its structure. At times, it can become like chalk, break away, and... Radioactive cloud clings to the top of Trollenberg Mountain. Our good friends, Alan Brooks and Professor Clavet, have seen this type of phenomenon before. In the Andes, three years earlier. Could it be the same cloud? Ah, and once again, Anne Pilgrim's mind is overwhelmed by forces unknown. Wonder what that might be. And Brett walks from the hut into the freezing cold darkness for no reason. The answers to this and many other questions lie ahead when we return to the crawling eye. The crawling eye was released in 1958 and was originally entitled The Trollenberg Terror. For the obvious reason, because that's the name of the town and the mountain where this story takes place. But the name was changed and soon you'll see why. Now back to the crawling eye. So, this mysterious cloud moves down to the hut, and Dewhurst is found with his head ripped from his body. It seems the visitors in the cloud know of Anne's eavesdropping on their thoughts. Wonder what they'll do about the intrusion when the crawling eye returns. Our special guest tonight has been missing for many years. We found him in our nets while we were fishing. We had the opportunity of interviewing at the Chiller Theater Convention. Now, without further ado, the original creature from the Black Lagoon, Mr. Ben Chapman. Welcome. We're here at the Chiller Theater Convention in Sea Caucus, New Jersey on Halloween. Today, we have one of the most exciting guests of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, the creature from the Black Lagoon, Ben Chapman. Uh, ben, tell us, uh, how did you get the part as the creature from the Black Lagoon? Well, at that time, this is 1953, uh, I was under contract to Universal Studios. And uh, I just happened to come onto the lot, and I was wandering around, I walked into... Uh, uh, the casting director, she, it was a woman named Johnny Rennick, and she was the casting director for all the Wranglers and people like that. So. She asked me if uh, I'd heard about this picture that they were going to cast and shoot 
here. And I said, well, what picture is this? She says, it has something to do with diving and underwater and you'd be perfect and da 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 I said, I haven't heard anything about it. She says, stand up. And I stood up. And I'm six feet five. So she says, okay, uh, let's go for a walk. So we walked through the lot. All of a sudden, she spotted about four or five gentlemen standing in the street, you know, be between stages. And she says, now stand right here and don't move. So she continued on about 50 feet. They got into a little powwow. Then all of a sudden, they all turned around. They started <laughs> looking. <laughs> and then, mm, piece of meat, huh? Anyhow, uh, then they started talking. Then they'd look back again. Then finally, she said her goodbyes to them. Came back to me. She says, let's go back to my office. We got back to her office. She says, now, tomorrow morning, I want you to come in and see me. I said, what was that? She said, just come in and see me tomorrow. Next day, she took me up to the office. I met Bill Allen and uh, Jack Arnold. And they all knew that I was a contract T. Right, that you, you were on location. So Jack asked me to stand up, and he looks at me, and he looks up and down, and he goes, okay, we'll use him. How heavy was the suit that you wore? Actually, you know, it looks very bulky, but it wasn't because, uh, first of all, um, I, the whole thing is a body stocking to begin with. Oh, really? So what they did, they laid me out on a table, and they did a complete, they put a skull cap on, did a complete body of Paris, uh, a plaster cast, of Paris, cast, cast of, of my whole body. How long did you I mean, there? oh. <laughs> For a long, until they tell you Did to, you get stuck you get, in it when they tried to No, <laughs> but, uh, but it was, it was kind of freaky because, you know, this thing starts to harden around you wow. and you're laying there you and, and when they did the, 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 the head, they had two little holes. You get a little claustrophobic sure. because this thing, you can feel it hardening on you. Oh, and can't wait they, to get they, it off, right? Yeah. And then they, you know, they put uh, grease on you and then they lift it off and you go, oh yeah. Wow. You wouldn't want to do that again. And then they made a mold from there. Then they molded all the body parts, the legs, the arms, what was the it, chest, latex? the body. Uh, the, the body stocking? Yeah. Hey, uh, you are charming. I, I mean, it's a pleasure. Oh, hey. It's I, a pleasure I, to meet you. I'm enjoying myself. And we, I mean and we are so proud I'm to have here. you here. Well, and, uh, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, we'd like to thank the Gill Man, Ben Chapman, for being on our show. Now... Here, yeah, brother, without further ado, we bring you back to the crawling on eye. We won't have to wait long to find out. Ah, oh, well, well, well. Our visitors aren't very happy having a psychic around. First, they try to control Anne and have her come to them. When that doesn't work, they send Brett, who is now a zombie, down to the town to kill her. Professor Clavette seems to believe that these beings are aliens from another world. That would explain the freezing cold temperature. Wonder what they'll try next when the crawling eye continues. Janet Monroe, who plays the lovely Anne Pilgrim in tonight's film, also starred in the Day the Earth Caught Fire, and Darby O'Gill and the Little People. Darby O'Gill and the Little People was Sean Connery's first starring film. Now back to the crawling eye. Giant one-eyed aliens with massive brain power and long tentacle arms. A far cry from the little gray aliens you refer to as extraterrestrials. Where did they come from, and how do we combat them? Can the observatory withstand the attack of the crawling eye? The Crawling Eye was directed by Quentin Lawrence, who also directed the 1966 Avenger episode, The Grave Diggers. This starred Paul Massey, who also starred in the Hammer film, The Two Faces of Dr. Jekyll. Now, to the conclusion of The Crawling Eye.